you're looking for something, you just type in a hashtag and everything that's associated with that subject just comes up, right? So somebody hashtag, I, I hashtag, hashtag mommy baking. Somebody puts in baking or mommy baking, boom, all my pictures and videos come up. They may hire me, right? So I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Having a personal brand also creates intentions that are clear and genuine, okay? That's the stuff we're talking about. Builds connections. As I said, personal branding helps a person build connections in different fields and their area of speciality. Like I said, baker, for example, musician, a painter. Um, you guys know Justin Bieber, right? Right? You guys heard of Justin Bieber. Now, he was also um, discovered because he had posted uh, a video of him singing and dancing. And that's how he got discovered because I, I believe it was Usher who saw this boy's video on YouTube, and they called him over, boom, and now he's Justin Bieber, the troublemaker, who's married now, right? Or for example, uh, there's another one called, his name is Sean Mendes, right? He also was uh, a YouTube uh, success as well. So, you know what, nowadays, guys, when I was growing up, in order to be discovered, Right, you had to be seen by a Mao Mong. Mao Mong is um, like a, an agent. Like, uh, uh, for example, like, who was it? Like Naomi Campbell. She was discovered while she was walking in a mall with her mom. And uh, a modeling booker saw her and, 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 and invited her to come and, and be a model, right? And then, and then after that, it's, uh, you have all these shows now, you know, like American Idol, X Factor, or uh, Got Talent. And these are how people get dis discovered as well. But then you also have the internet. Now the internet is faster. So the moment you post something, if you want to get dis discovered, and if you're good enough, and if, you, if your video, your photo hits that right person, then you could be the next Justin Bieber, or the next Shawn Mendes, or the next Naomi Campbell, right? Once a person builds his or her reputation, it will help them get to more exposure and more opportunities. And that's what I've been talking about, right? Uh, as I said, being hired to review products, get hired to do a job, or even get discovered, okay? Builds cre uh, credibility. Personal branding aids in establishing his or her name as a thought leader and expert in his area of speciality. For example, me. Now, as I told you, I didn't graduate, I didn't go to university, I didn't go to college. I barely graduated from high school. I was lucky to graduate from high school. I came to Thailand. I have no special skills, I can't sing. I can't dance. Well, I can dance a little bit, but not like proper dance. Um, um, and I didn't know I could act. I didn't even know that I liked it. So I came to Thailand, and all I knew was that I wanted to try modeling. And I became a beauty. I entered a beauty pageant because I thought it'd be a good foot in the door. And um, and I won. And then I started modeling. And then I got invited to do a TV show. I hosted a few TV shows in Thai. And being born and raised in America, my Thai was crap. It was so bad, okay? I watched myself on TV, and I would cringe. I'd have to turn off the TV, because my, I just didn't understand what the heck I was saying. But people were watching it. I didn't understand. What's going on? You know, but it was just my luck. And then after that, um, I, I was uh, I was asked to uh, try soap opera acting, and I thought, mm, I don't know, you know, Thai, Thai is not good. And he was like, you know what? It's okay. Uh, you're playing a girl who's a model who comes from America, which was me, right? And um, her Thai doesn't have to be 100 percent. You know, you. You uh, remember your lines and try to say it as clearly and tight as possible, and, and you know, we'll take it from there. And then I ended up enjoying it, and I love it. And now I've done over 20 
many soap operas, and I've won a few awards, and I did a few movies, and um, and that was my pure luck. Okay, so um, and now today, 26 years being in Thailand, I six for six seasons, I got to do the face. I got to be the Naomi Campbell of Thailand, because I thought, you know what? If the show is gonna work, there's gotta be someone who's, who people will have, who's gonna want to love to hate, right? There's gotta be somebody who people are gonna be like, mm -hmm. so I thought, you know what, that should be me. So I, I portrayed this Naomi Campbell of Thailand, and then the show took off, and then six seasons later, you know, people are looking at me as mentor, as teacher, as coach, and I'm here before you all today to talk to you about personal branding. Hey, I didn't finish university, I didn't graduate from college, you know, but because um, of my life experiences and because, you know what, I've long paid long to. I've tried, failed, tried again, and learned from my mistakes. And today I'm going to tell you that um, <coughs> What you see is what you get. What you see on my social media is what I am. What you see on the face is not me. That's acting, right? Okay, guys. Um, helps in gaining recognition in their area of expertise. As I said, now, because I've been on the face, and um, let, let me talk a little bit about that, because it has to do with branding and social media as well. Now this is the this is the negative bit. Where later in, in, in my talk today, I'm going to talk about um, what not to post, which I, I kind of talk, uh, talked about earlier in my speech. Um, uh, so in the face, because I became the Naomi Campbell of Thailand, right? I was I got a lot of hate. Like in my Instagram photos, like people really hated me because they really thought I was that bitch, right? And so I was getting hate messages, like people would, would uh, how do you call it, make up profiles just to come into my Facebook, uh, just to come into my Instagram to tell me how much they hated me. And when I clicked into their, 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 their profile, it was one person, like, and it was private, so I knew it was fake, right? And so, you know, um, so that's how good my Naomi Campbell of Thailand was, right? I got the whole country to literally hate me. But anyway, but I can tell you this. Um, I really had to have thick <coughs> skin. I really, really had to be able to block all of that negative out because it was really bad. It was so bad. One of them, I'll, I'll never forget this, one of them said that, look at, I feel sorry for your son because he has you as a mother. And that's harsh. That, that's really harsh. And then there are funny ones where, you know, I, I, I could feel it, I could sense it, that they were really upset because they were like, you look at, you So basically, look at, you wrinkled uterus? Well, no, it's uterus, isn't it? Yeah. Weird, moo. You wrinkled moo. And I was like, is that all you can say? I was like, are you, you know. But um, anyway, so it got pretty, pretty bad. And so me being the only mentor that was on for uh, two or three seasons at that time, every time there was a new mentor or the kids, I'd have to tell them, you know what? People are really into this show, and I promise you, don't take the negative uh, comments to heart because it will mess you up. It will tear you down, and you will feel that big because people can be so mean, and they are that mean. And this is just from a show, guys. Okay? So, the reason why I'm telling you this is because there, had, there was this one mentor where she had cut a girl off on the opposing team. And I 
think all of Thailand decided to just like attack her. So from 7 to 11 p.m., this mentor was sitting there reading every single comment. I'm like, are you nuts? Who does that? And the next day we had filming, and you know, and like, and she came on set and she was just like, Sweaty cat, sweaty cat. I was like, are you okay? Oh, Pete, so bye. I'm okay, I'm okay. And so she happened to go to the elimination booth that day as the winning team. So she got to cut somebody from the, the other two teams, right? And so for some reason she decides to ask, you know, one of the mentors to come in. And um, and uh, what happened was we were shooting another another episode down the line, right? But the episode that she had cut this girl, which had got her to, to get into like crap for, uh, which had just aired the night before, right? And she's standing there, and she's just going at it. She's just saying, you know, you, da, 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 da. and this mentor is standing there, and she's just like, because this the girl who got, who was sitting from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. reading all these negative stuff about her, you know, it's just, she's la by Pablusic. She's just, you know, she's, she's pissed off, right? So what I'm telling you guys is, you know what? I it took a lot to to block all that stuff out because I, for one, I, I kept telling myself that you know what? People are really into this show, and the only time that they are sending me all these negative stuff is during the show. So I know it's because of the show. So I'm able to justify all those, and I and I tell myself. That, you know what, I'm doing a very good job, right? Because people are actually really do hate me and they're watching the shows. And we're, 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 we're um, creating this big buzz of people talking about it. And that's what it is today. It's so bizarre. The more people talk negative or negative things, the more famous you are. What, are we in? what kind of world are we living in? It's so weird. But anyway, you know, guys, so what I'm saying is sometimes. You know, when something like that happens, or if you're bullied, you know, or you know someone who's being bullied, you've gotta, you've gotta help them out because um, it is damaging, you know? And you are not as strong as I am I'm to take all that stuff. <laughs> okay, guys, um, admiration, respect, and trust will come along with the person's name, right? Helps gain confidence, emphasizes the strength of an individual and can give direction as to where he or she can use those strengths. The gain of confidence will come from their positive qualities and strengths that they could share publicly. Right. That's if you don't get bullied. Okay. That's this is where this comes and helps you. Right. We live in an age where likes and shares matter. When you post a photo. If you posted a photo for about 15 minutes, and if you haven't gotten more than 50 likes, you're like, oh my god, nobody loves me, nobody cares. I know people like that. It's so weird. You know, all of a sudden, we feel like, 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 I have to be liked by people I don't know. Like that matters. Like if I posted, if I don't get more than like seven thousand likes, my career's over. You know, it's like I don't know. Y'all, this world is changing so much. But that's what that's the life we live in, and we have to adapt. But you have to know that you know what? You're in charge of your life. You're in charge of what you put out there. You're in charge of your own branding. So it's important on, on how you portray yourself, yeah? Uh, a well-done personal branding will emphasize the strength of an individual and can give you direction as to where he or she can use those strengths. No one would hire me to walk their dog or become a singer, right? Because one, I already told you I can't sing and I don't post any videos of me singing. I've done that once and it was because I was intoxicated slightly. And it was horrible because I was I sang off key, right? <laughs> and um, for example, you know I'm a model, so nobody's gonna hire me to walk their dog, right? Or groom their dog, right? So 
how you want to portray, portray yourself, that's what people are gonna get. So if you put up this, this lie, you know, of, of something that you're not, well, you're just living someone else's life. You're living a lie, right? Things that you actually are and what you want to be are two different things. And it's always important to know that and separate that. Having authenticity. A person's brand comes from passion, skills, goals, and values. It is a result of a person's hunt for fulfillment and meaning. And that's me. Being a mother has big meaning. I've waited, you know, for so long for this beautiful little boy named Sky to come into my life. Um, you know, it wasn't easy. I, I didn't get pregnant naturally. I had to uh, do IVF. You know, we were lucky with Sky on the second time. And then we wanted another child, and um, we tried 10 times not successful, so I thought, you know what, it's all right. As long as I got one, it's okay. So that's why um, on my social media, it's about family life because my son is the most important thing to me, and I want people to know that. You know, parenting and now coaching. Uh, that's why I'm here today because a dad saw me on the face or, or know, knew that um, I do uh, seminars, you know, I do coaching, and that's why I'm here today. Personal branding helps a person grow from something that he or she believes. Personal branding is a person itself and no one else. That's right. If you're going to sell yourself out there, you got to sell it right. Okay, guys? Don't live a lie. Right. Now, you are what you post. So does anybody watch rugby here? Any rugby fans? <laughs> All right, it's, it's okay. This is recently, this news is recently. This is um, an Australian rugby player named Israel Fulau, and he plays for the Wallabies in Australia. Now he's a devout Christian, right? He's young, he's one of Australia's like top players. I mean, he makes mega bucks, okay guys? Now. He um, he posted, he ranted, he ranted on his social media, it was Twitter, and said that um, homosexuals, uh, people who gamble, uh, will go to hell. You know, so he, he was ranting, basically, in a nutshell, this is what he said, he ranted. And in his contract, there is a clause there that, you know, you have to be aware and be careful of what you post because you are uh, uh, an athlete, you're on a national team, so there, uh, there's an image that you have to keep. Now, he went and, um, you know, rented, and uh, people have a right to rent, right? People have a right to say what they want, freedom of speech, right? If you're religious or, you know, whatever, you have the right to do that. But, for, because of what he said, he got fired. He got fired and now he has no job, okay? So, he was getting paid like a stupid amount of money. So, this is a... Uh, a football player, a rugby player in his 20s who have, has now got fired for playing rugby. Now in Australia, right, I had read, which um, I was going to uh, get the photo of it, but I couldn't find it. Now, if you're an athlete and you got caught uh, drinking and driving, if you got caught gambling or doing drugs, uh, you would get suspended from football six months or a year, two years, five years, something along that line. But he just ranted and just said something that was religious based. He got fired. So it goes back to my er, what I said earlier. Be careful of what you guys post. Be careful of what you guys rant about because it will bite you in the butt one day. Especially, you guys are young now, you're going to be looking for jobs, you're going to be applying for jobs. 
you know what? Resumes don't, they probably don't mean much anymore. Resumes, you guys still use that word, right? You know what that is, right? It's still in the vocabulary, right? Okay. All they have to do is Google your name, and every single thing, every single photo, every single dish of food or any place that you've ever posted is going to be there. And all they have to do is scroll down and see what type of person you are. So please, because I know a lot of people who've gotten into a lot of trouble because they just wanted to rent. Yeah, to love my alone. Right, 10 things you should never post on social media. First one, offensive content on social media. Racial slurs, graphic images, crude jokes, swearing, right? We know about that. Two, gossip or attacks against specific people. When you specifically call someone out in such a public venue, you often leave that relationship in a state of dis uh, repair, right? I'm trying to think of the example because I know I've done that once or maybe twice and that person is no longer talking to me. And it was because I was young and stupid and that's why I could stand here today and tell you not to do that. So, you know, let's say, um, oh, you know what I did once? It's so embarrassing. Okay, so I was at a concert and, um, and there was someone that was there and um, they, uh, they, they were wearing something that wasn't so attractive and I thought it was funny to just talk about it 